ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, don't say that fool ain't never did nothing for us because that fool done did it again. Pay attention. Market participation exception and subsidies. Pay attention. The Dormant Commerce Clause does not prohibit a state from participating in the free market if it acts like a private enterprise. When a state engages in commerce, it does so privately. So when the courts take your cases under the Chris system and they engage in commerce by having interest-bearing accounts when they collect interest, they're making a profit. Just the sheer practice of collecting interest is making a profit. That means, ladies and gentlemen, that they are participating as a private corporation, not as government. The state does not have the powers to engage in commerce. Not even the Copa system. No sorry, Bobby. No sorry, Bobby. They don't get to do it. Yep, they do it all the time, don't they? Okay? They do it all the time. Look, nothing in the purposes animating the Commerce Clause prohibit a state in the absence of congressional action from participating in the market and exercising the right in favor of its own citizens over others. Nothing! But when they do so, they do it as a private, private, you hear me, private? Get over here! Watch that latrine. I'm sorry, not that type of private. As a private corporation or a private enterprise, you know what an enterprise is? No, it's not a starship. An enterprise is a business, a business. And it's a private one. So they don't get to be a private business and still be saying we government. Okay, that the law don't the law don't permit it. The law says, oh no, you don't. Don't don't even think about it. It's what the law says. Now look, hold on now. I don't want y'all to think I'm crazy or anything. Y'all don't understand. I've been looking for this information for quite some time. I've been searching. And I couldn't find it. And now I done found it all in one week. And I just say, you was a mother, you, you was a genius. That's what I say. Okay, sorry. It is thanks to the God that I serve that I have that ability to be able to find what I need because of this ability that I receive. By engaging in the railroad business, the state cannot withdraw the railroad from the power of the federal government to regulate commerce. You see, states are immune from taxation. So by engaging, pay attention, every one of you, because you need to understand what's being said here. By engaging in the railroad business and enterprise, a state cannot withdraw the railroad claiming that it's under sovereign protection from the power of the federal government to regulate commerce, to tax it. Okay, the dormant commerce clause does not prohibit the state from participating in a free market. See, they can invest in bonds if it acts like a private corporation. Just that simple. When they engage in commerce, they are as any other ordinary corporation. In implementing the commerce clause, the Supreme Court has adhered strictly to the principle that the right to engage in interstate commerce is not the gift of a state that the state cannot regulate or restrain your ability to engage in commerce, but Congress can, okay? Okay, do you understand? When a state or local government enters the market as a participant, it is not subject to the restraints of the dormant commerce clause. What are those restraints if they can't be taxed? The limit of market participation doctrine must be that it allows the state to impose burdens on commerce within its own boundaries and jurisdiction, jurisdiction. So let's go ahead and see Miami-Dade County. 
Let's take a look at this real quick. Just real quick. I promise you it's real quick. Got a meeting I got. And I got to finish. I've been doing this all morning. All week. Y'all know it's been going on all week. We can go here. Let's go on down here. Uh oh. Uh, sorry, got to do that again because it, it it didn't pick up nothing. Ooh wee! Didn't know it was gonna do that. Got to be one more again, okay? By engaging in the railroad business, we already uncovered the railroad business. Nope, done covered that too. Uh, done covered that too. Nope, done covered that too. I forgot which one. Oh, that was Mc 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 uh, Dade, Dade County. Where? Come on, McDade. Uh oh, we done passed it up, y'all. We gotta go back on up. Move it on up to the upside. To a deluxe. Uh oh, case law. I done curse. Okay. What we're gonna do is that right there. Then we're gonna click on it. Tick tock. Tick tock. All right, it's twisting and turning. Tossing and turning all night, claiming immune from the dominant commerce clause under the market participation exception when a state or local government enters the market as a participant. Now, pay, pay, pay attention. The county next claims that it is immune from the dormant commerce clause strictures under the market participant exception. See, they created this clause that says they get to participate in the market uh -uh. pay attention when a state or local government enters the market as a participant it is not subject to the restraints on the dormant commerce clause well hold on the limit of market participation doctrine must be that it allows the state to impose burdens on commerce within the market in which it is a participant but it goes no further so they said they can regulate it. They can be in the market and they can regulate it and they have to follow those same rules. We agree with the district court that the market participant exception does not apply to the county uh, services. Don't care. A state and local government may take advantage of the market participation exception only if the government is a proprietor of goods and services in the relevant market. And the court considered the challenge that Georgia regulated the residents uh, prior agreement. Uh, don't care. So guess what we're going to do? Because, look, ladies and gentlemen, you know they created an exception to the rule. Okay? You know they always create an exception copy to the rule. So, wait, you know what? Let's do it this way. We're going to Google it. This is their exception. Because there is no exception in actual law, ultimately means that because Congress has given, been given the power over interstate commerce, state cannot discriminate against interstate commerce, nor can they duly burden interstate commerce, even in the absence of federal legislative regulation activities. That's not what it means. That's not, ladies and gentlemen, that's not what it means. It means that they get to participate in commerce if they claim they're doing it for state business. Okay, but as I said, as we saw, dormant commerce powers. The aspects of the Commerce Clause, sometimes called dormant commerce clause, means that the courts may measure state legislation against commerce. Okay, because they're not immune. When they engage in commerce, they are not immune. Okay? So and this thing says when state and local government, ladies and gentlemen, it has nothing to do with state and local government. It's in time, anytime anyone claiming to be sovereign, anytime anybody's claiming to be sovereign, that they don't mean sovereignty. Now, these documents have not been put up yet, but they will be put up today. Sorry, I'm working on some things. I got a lot of work to do. This is the thing that I use to put stuff up on the internet. Okay, but what I needed to do right here is I needed to put this particular section of case law. Now, I got to go down here first, get rid of you, and then I got to do that. Okay, 
and then I go back up. Part of this is missing. Okay, yeah, the top part is missing. I don't know how the main part that I'm trying to copy got missing when it I started up here. Y'all saw me start up there. That's how I got all the way down to the bottom. Started from the top, now we made, you know, and then we started from the bottom. And, you know, you see what I'm talking about? I don't know why this be playing games like that, y'all. If I wasn't paying attention, ooh-wee, I'd be pissed off talking about, oh, now I got to go find that again. Okay? There it is right there. It's there. Okay? It is there. Now, I'm going to get rid of government, a local, because it's government. Government is government. I'm going to highlight when government is the market participant. Uh uh. There you go. Because this is taken from that case where somebody's saying that. Okay? We don't want that right there. They are not subject. See, that's why they're quoting it. Because somebody else said that. See, quotations? See that right there? That's because somebody else said that. We don't want that quotation. You know what we want? We want the one we saw at the beginning. So before I cut this video short, within 15 minutes, short within 15 minutes, we're going to go back to the other one that gave us what we were looking for, the proper understanding, okay? By engaging in railroad businesses, they cannot withdraw. We don't want that one. We don't want the other one that talks about railroads. We, the state lacks the power to regulate commerce. Nope. State is not sovereign without the power to regulate its own internal commerce as well as police. That was the first one. I did read that one when it first came up, but that's not the railroad business. This is the one we want, right? This is the one we want. Governmental power is unavailable to private parties. See, a state regulates when it exercises governmental powers that are unavailable to private parties. So, ladies and gentlemen, the state, if it's participating in the market, it cannot regulate it after it's participated. In other words, it can't make it easier for itself. That's why it says the dormant commerce clause claim would fail because New York was acting as a market participant and not as a regulator when it created ZEC, Z-E-C, a private corporation they created. Okay? So watch this. We're going to take this. That's what we're looking for. See, he only takes what he's looking for. He don't take all the other junk. That shows you how partial he is. He only takes the stuff that he's searching for. He ain't going to take nothing else. See, he can't do that. He got to take everything. Got to take everything. Go ahead, drink it all up. Go ahead. All that customer royal. Drink it up. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, there are a lot of stupid people on this planet. Don't be like the stupid people, please. Do not be like the stupid people. We got to undo that because that's not where it's supposed to be. Oh, that is where it's supposed to be. Hold on. That is where it's supposed to be. So we're going to put it back. Put it back. Don't touch that. Put it back. Don't touch that. Put it back. Let's see. I'm going to keep it like that, okay, because I'd rather have the blues. Stop spreading the blues. I'm leaving today. Okay, there you go. And thus, that paragraph is finished. So now you have proof that when the government enters into the market to participate, it is subject to the restraints of the dormant commerce clause. Restraints. Why? Because when they enter the market to participate, pay attention. I'm going to get rid of not. Sorry. Okay? Because they are subject, does not prohibit the state from participating in the free market if it acts like a private company. 
That's why I took not because not is a comment that someone is making that's saying if this was or if this isn't. That's a presumption someone is raising. So anytime the government enters into commerce, it abandons its sovereign capacity and should be treated as any other ordinary corporation. So now you got the you can look it up for yourself. Ladies and gentlemen, I put in the sovereign does not get to engage in commerce. That's all I put. And these are all the cases talking about, wait a minute, hold on. You want to participate? Well, you're going to pay taxes. That's what's going on here. On the right to engage in interstate commerce is not the gift of a state and that the state cannot regulate or restrain it. The Supreme Court has stated the state and local governments enters into the market as a participant it is not subject to the restraints of the commerce clause because they're free to commerce only as a private party hold on see this right here we got one more sorry y'all i said 15 minutes i apologize y'all know how it is this right here that last part right there that ain't showing y'all that's the point we gonna be making promise you it's gonna be saying what we needed to say guarantees it you guarantee it? How you know we'll guarantee it? You ain't even seen the case before. When a market participant exception applies, the law is unsettled. The law is unsettled. The law is unsettled. As to whether further commerce clause analysis is necessary, the Supreme Court has stated that when a state or local government is into the market as a participant, it is not subject to the restraints of the commerce clause. A plurality of the court engaged in pipe balancing after finding that the government was acting as a market participant. Because the ordinances does not fall under the market participant exception, the court need not exempt, uh, excuse me, attempt to resolve the issue. Market participant exception. Okay, because the ordinance does not fall, they created an ordinance. They created an ordinance. Whether the challenge program constitutes a direct state participation in the market. Okay, the critical inquiry, it says internal quotations omitted. The court has applied the market participant exception where the state operated a cement plant and restricted the sale of the plant cement to in-state purchasers, where the city required all city funded construction projects to be performed by crews that included city residents, and where the counties established a waste processing facility that required all solid waste generated within the counties be delivered to the facility. The court is unable to discern, nor does the city adequately explain how the market participation exception applies in this case. The city emphasizes that, more through its financial support, this company, and in other ways, the city participated in the market, rescuing and adopting out homeless animals. That may be true, and the ordinance may benefit the city's participation in part of the market, but... In attempting to reconfigure the market for pets, the city was acting as a market regulator and not as a market participant. The city has not adopted a policy that it, as a market participant, will do business only for certain pet shops. It has not stipulated that pet shops within the city must buy animals solely from city-sponsored operations. Ladies and gentlemen, please, this exception that they created violates international law. International law says they don't get to have an exception. You engage in a market, and oh, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, there's a violation of the Constitution because the people must say, okay, you can invest my money into the market. The people must say, okay, you can invest my property into the market. The people must say that. Pay attention. People, not Congress. Congress doesn't get to do that because that's my money. You want to invest my money in the market? You need to come ask me. And I have to agree. So I have to have the right to not engage in the market with my money. You don't have the right just to do it because you feel like it. By the way, I've been going over case law all day where it says Congress works for the people, not the people for Congress. Okay? And because the sovereignty resides in the people, that's what you need to look up. Sovereignty resides in the people. Sovereignty resides in the people. That's all you need to look up. Trust me. Sovereignty resides in the people. Do real quick. Sorry. O-V-E-R-E-I-G-N-T-Y. 
three S I D E S N. Now remember, this is a group. The P E uh oh D -E O P L E. The people is a group. It's a specific. See, section one hundred. Sovereignty resides in the people. Style of process. California government code. Sovereignty resides in the people. So you don't get to invest my money without coming to me because my money is individual. That's not a majority thing. See, we have vowed our fortunes and our lives, but I did not give you permission to gamble with my mother money. Sorry. That's what government is doing when they invest in the market. The market is a gamble. That's why they must warn you. That's why you see a lot of people who invest in the market end up going to Gamblers Anonymous. Now, just keep in mind, another thing we should keep in mind is that we are dealing with a constitutional democracy in which the sovereignty resides in the people. It is their constitution that we are construing. They have a right to change, abrogate, or modify it in a manner they see fit so long as they keep within the confines of the federal constitution. Ladies and gentlemen, this case, Armstrong versus Harris, I have no idea what this Florida 2000 case is, but this is what I'm going to tell you. This statement is true. Pay attention. The people is a group. It doesn't mean the person. It means the people collectively. Congress has no constitutional authority. They have the right to regulate commerce that they created that. The people didn't give them that right. Congress created that right, but they wove the people into it because of gold and silver. Okay, we can accept that as legal tender. No other form is legal tender but gold and silver. And then all of a sudden, they started making other rules and other laws. Sorry, people. Y'all gave away the farmhouse. Sovereignty resides in the people. And the electors have a right to approve or reject a proposed amendment to the organic laws of the state. No, uh, ladies and gentlemen, the electors, they're right about that. It's Congress who does that, not the electors. See, Congress are the ones who change the organic laws of the state. Limited only by those instances where there is an entire failure to comply with plan and essential requirements of organic law and proposing amendments as demonstrated in Rivera Cruz case. This must be a California case. Nope, this Dade County again, y'all. Well, no, that's not this Dade County right here. Let's see what county this, this cold case is. Yep, Florida. That's Florida. Oh, we already went to people versus gray. Sovereignty resides in the people. The sovereignty of the people or state. Oh, by the way, I'm so glad we did this. I just needed to tell you that, and I'm glad it points it out here. Ladies and gentlemen, You've been hearing me say that the people are the state, that you are citizens of the state, which makes you one of the people of the United States because the people of the United States are the individual states. Pay attention. The sovereignty of the people or state, that's why it's reserved to the state or to the people respectively under the 10th Amendment to the Bill of Rights. So the people are the state if you are a citizen of a state you are one of the people so when you hear them say oh no that's a different group that's a lie and i'm glad somebody has pointed it out without me having to point that out i've been wanting to tell y'all that so i'm grateful that they pointed that out everybody want to say well i don't know the law they need to interpret the law i don't know that nobody interpreting the law and that's what you get Ignorance, you don't have no excuse, so you don't have no right to complain about your ignorance. Well, I've been dick. I've been sitting up here trying to figure things out for 58, no, one, no, 70. I forgot how long. But I'm telling you, uh, Kirby, that was my homie. Yeah, Kirby, I knew him. He, he, he was like a love bug or something. That he had like, he, 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 man, he was kind of famous, you know. He went to a lot of places, too. Yeah, he was, a, he was a speeder, though. He did speed. <laughs> in the fundamental, it is, in our system of government, that the sovereignty resides in the people. 
and that the state may exercise only those powers given to it by law and only in the manner and according to the forms authorized by law. The court may only exercise those authorities and powers granted them. And even those powers may be exercised only when that power to act is properly invoked. Okay, this is the thing about jurisdiction. Okay, let me tell you what they've done. And then that's it. They have amended these rules under presumption because they presume they have the right, which is why we are going to be challenging. So I'm sorry that the document is taking a little while because it's taking a little while because I got too much work to do. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we brought in some other people to help with SACOM. we got to do some training over the next couple of weeks, but you shall see things improve. You have my word on that. Not just my word from before, but my word as who I am as a person. All right? We have a meeting tonight in less than 30 minutes, so I've got to go. Y'all take care, and we will be getting back with y'all soon. Got to go, got to go, got to go. And do not, do not contact me regarding company business on my company email. Do not kind of try to contact me through either of the companies. Ladies and gentlemen, it's not permitted or allowed. They will not send me any emails. They have the rule. They can't even forward it to me. Sorry! Gotta go.